Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, the magic word today is Maria Tome. <laughs> I thought it was transportation. <laughs> oh, transportation, okay. okay. This is the uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy at uh, 4 o'clock on every given Wednesday. And we're talking about uh, developments in clean transportation. She has uh, studied that for as long as I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, kind of going back to where we had been talking about stuff, not only last week about the energy storage piece, but even back in May when we had a series of Oh, yeah, I remember. We, had, topics, we did a lot transportation. of yeah, investigation into that. Yeah. yeah. And, and why? Why do we care about, you know, like... Uh, Aren't we really more concerned with developing clean energy at the generation level? You're talking about using energy, whatever energy kind of it is, at the transportation level. Yes, we it's, are it, interested. Yeah, go ahead. Go <laughs> you ahead. know, you're talking about the energy space, and a very large part of our energy puzzle is the transportation piece. So, well, but it, it's tricky because we don't regulate the transportation part of our energy use quite the way we do our electricity. Yeah, use. right. It hasn't really been wrapped into the yeah, into the critical yeah. thinking. Yeah. So I thought, you know, I thought we'd go back to an idea that we um, were talking about several time, several years ago, actually, about the intersection of not just transportation and energy, but also land use, because you really can't talk about transportation systems and energy efficient transportation without at least looking at land use a little bit. So I thought we should talk about where the overlaps are and what exactly they are and who's in charge of those pieces. Uh, you, kind you wanted of a, a an ambitious picture. show? This is going to be an ambitious show. And, We've talked about energy and transportation. And at the end, we have some but fun. land use? Yeah. We're not going to get into the details. It's really what is the intersection. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I have a couple of slides to help us to um, structure our, our discussion. Okay. I had a Let's couple of questions it. for you yeah. to okay. help out. Okay, yeah, well, you can have questions for okay. me. I can have questions uh -oh. for you. <laughs> okay, at the end. There we go. So if you want to look at the uh, first slide, it just illustrates the transport, land use, and energy are not separate. They interact with each other, they affect each other. And so the next slide, we can talk about a little of that interaction. So where does transportation and land use overlap? What is that? So this is your quest. This is one of your, your three okay, questions. Okay. That's, what, is, what is that? What is that? Uh, that? How did you know my question? What is that? <laughs> I, the, it's the uh, it's the land use part. Land use, I guess, is where you have people live, maybe, uh -huh. where you put roads. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, the next slide. Infrastructure, exactly. You need, you what are you building? You have a place for infrastructure. You're building stuff to allow transportation to occur. Okay. Yeah. All so right. so who's in charge of that? Well, uh, okay, that's, I think that's over my pay grade. <laughs> um, you're talking about land use. Yeah. Land, land and use is a big Piece. area of government, you know, Talk about the overlap with statutes and, and regulations and what have you, and case law. Um, land use in Hawaii, an island state, is huge. Yep, yep. Um, and expensive, yes. very expensive, yeah. Yeah, so the next slide gives a hint of what I had in mind as some of the starting point. So the transportation and land use overlap in the infrastructure area is airports, highways, hard harbors, fuel and weight taxes, those are things that the state creates, regulates, is responsible for. Okay. Right. And then the county also, they do the roads, they do parking, that's land use, right? If it's a parking spot, that is designated for parking. Sure. You know, bus stops, bike lanes, lane markings, there's a lot of infrastructure that the county does in the cities, and then the state does more of the connections between the cities. And Don't so. forget zoning. Is, is, maybe zoning? I can't see it Okay. There. No, no, we're going to add stuff zoning. to this eventually. Land use is this all is about the beginning of the discussion. Versa. There you go. Okay, yeah. zoning. Would that be, that would be state and county? Would that be... Uh, that, no, that would be, I mean, that would be county. No, no. Okay, so, yeah, that would be on that list. All right, All okay. right, the next, so let's move okay, this that along. Helps, helps explain that. Yeah, so the next one, similar question. Transportation and energy overlap is an interesting area covering the things that use energy. Well, that's what we've been talking about, isn't it? 
you know, I'm talking about trying to make clean transportation and right, uh, not right. use so much fossil fuel. Yeah. The flaw in all of that, which hasn't been re resolved yet, is that when you drive your electric car, which has been charged by fossil fuel at the generator, um, you're still using fossil fuel. Okay, so it depends when you charge it and how you charge it. And what direction is your generation system going in? If you're buying a vehicle that's going to last 10, 15, maybe even more years, we've got some old cars, you know, yeah, well, that yeah. is going to be using that type of fuel. Then right? you're locked in. Yeah, to a you're certain extent. In, and, and, yeah. But if you change the generating system from fossil fuel to renewables <laughs> and you use that in the car, that's nirvana. And what that's happens? That's exactly what we want. And what happens if having vehicles or other uses of this? potentially excess renewable energy at certain times of the day. If we're using that better, it might make the economics for those projects better. So there could be some synergies there. So the next slide, if you'd like to. Uh, yeah, let's look at the next go slide. Ahead. So okay. that's modes and vehicles, because it's more than just vehicles. It's also modes. And we have an interesting, uh, the next slide shows who's in charge, and then we talk about what are modes. OK. OK, so we've got. The modes include bus, transit service, your operator licensing, taxi regulations, vehicle registration. I left off the um, specific listing of airplanes, which are a mode, and boats, which are a mode, because generally speaking, those are not where most of the focus is. Yeah. yeah, so generally it does focus on the ground transportation. And then private, you know, this is a sector that it really does matter what the private sector is doing. Not only the people who are buying the vehicles or choosing the modes, but the folks who are building stuff and mm -hmm. making stuff and selling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is all about vehicles. And modes. You know, buses, it's a, that's a mode. Bicycles are a mode. Walking is a mode. Okay. Right. So if you make okay. pedestrian-friendly, bicycle-friendly cities, you are doing a little mode shifting instead okay. of getting into your car to have to drive to the grocery I'm store. I'm with you. This is, this is yeah. the, the main topic. But you know what? I get a reaction, Maria. We've been having this conversation for years. Yeah, but we got update on the, on okay, the numbers on the next slide. Tell me about how we've made some achievements. Okay, on the next slide, I, um, every couple of years I like to see how the... Um... Oh, whoops. We lost one. Yeah, don't Sorry. forget this one. Okay. All right. So before we get... To get to that. <laughs> Let's talk about this other question for Jay. Okay. What is this? Where do land use and energy intersect? What comes to mind when we're well, making decisions where are you about put a, a, a generator set? Yeah. Where, where are you going to put the transmission exactly. lines? Exactly. Fuel production. How are you going to deal with geothermal? Ooh, okay. That's a land use issue. Next slide. Yeah. Yep. So it's not just fuels, you know, if you're talking about growing liquid fuels, you know, materials to make liquid fuels, that's one thing. But now with the electric vehicles um, becoming a more important part of the discussion, where you put your generation is also very important. So mm -hmm. on the state side, you've got your fuel taxes, again, your electricity production incentives and restrictions. You know, you've got the land use and the zoning and whatnot there. Yeah. You've got incentives for certain types of vehicles or certain types of charging, and, and then you've got your county land use and permitting, and your private investment. But when you sales. are talking about land use, yes, I, I mean I have to throw this in: transportation, a lot of money. Yeah. Energy, billions. We import six billion dollars in fossil fuel still today. Yeah. Um, but land use, Hawaii. Uh, 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 you know, a limited land island state. Yeah, that's big money. So you're saying that. Money. So if you were going to change the size of those circles, you'd probably have land use being very complicated, very large, you bet. a lot of money, a lot of players. Everybody is the involved. The operative word being change. Yes. You want to change the use of land? Whoa. Yeah. You're really talking about revolution here. Yep. Not revolution. No. Revolution. <laughs> okay. Revolution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got, you know, so I actually had thought about that when we were look, working on the slides. It's like, well, you know, if we change it, it's like, ah, you know, we're, this is just to discuss, you know, the well, fact that there is overlap. It's true. It's a, you know, you like, can't really do one thing like without impacting something thing. else. You yeah. Kakaako was a, a, a Carta Blanca. Um, now we've made certain commitments in Kakaako. It was kind of a 
supposed to be the place where we're going to redesign land use and, and occupancy in the state of Hawaii, query whether we did a good job. Yeah, the yeah. next place will probably be Kalihi, you know, a few miles to the west. Uh, how are we going to do that? I mean, these are yeah. huge questions because they talk about lifestyle. Yeah. They talk about the economy. They talk about you know, people, you know, living in Hawaii in general. The future yeah. of the state is in land use. And so I yeah. think what I hear you saying is when you talk about land use, and we really must talk about land use, mm -hmm. we need to be talking about transportation and energy also. Yeah. So it's, you know, building your cities, right? So it's smart rebuilding growth, smart rebuilding, smart construction, smart design, yeah. smart communities. Oh, I'm getting a headache. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I haven't checked with the most recent condos, especially the ones that are going to be integrated near rail or, you know, other mass transit or bikeways. Yeah. You need some place to put your bicycle or your little electric scooter or whatever it is. I don't know. Are they inco incorporating that? We should get somebody to talk about that on one of these shows. Well, some places they are. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're thinking right, you would do that. Yeah. You'd make, I mean, even older buildings have a place for your bike or even your motorcycle. They ran out Ooh. of space lots um, of times because they're but so... But they need yeah. more space, yep. you're right. And then you've got to put it on the street, too. And if yeah. you have retail or, you know, any kind of commercial building, yeah. you need to allow space for that. Yeah. Are we doing that? And if we're not doing that, can we force force people to do that. <laughs> you know, like, for example, the electric vehicle rule about parking lots. Mm -hmm. um, we've essentially forced them to do that with yeah. electric vehicles. I'm not sure we've done it with bikes or walking paths. And walking paths, let's not diminish, let's not overlook the value, the importance of walking paths in our island state. Really important. And we have all but abandoned the idea. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to do that. There should yeah. be an initiative. And bikes, you know, I mean, I remember the, pardon me to go on, but I remember the Kaimuki bike lane with the sharrows and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they really haven't done it. And you can still ride in the gutter and fall down or get pushed off. Um, it's really not friendly in Kaimuki uh, to bikes. It's not, you know, if you lived in Kaimuki, you'd have a terrible time actually riding your bike, you know, into the, into the center of the city. Yeah. Um, we have to get on that. We haven't done it. Yeah. A lot of politicians have made a lot of smoke about that, haven't done it. So there's so. a lot of interesting stuff to talk about, follow up on, and yeah. get yeah. get busy on. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I'm coming up with a list for future time. This is the wish list? <laughs> yeah. The wish action list, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, so the next uh, slide, if, if we can just take a quick look at that one. So we had been talking about modes, okay. Now, bicycles are not on here because this is a federal um, slide, but it shows inner city rail and airlines and transit rail and motorcycles and so forth. And this is just to illustrate what the different types of modes are in general. And this is a national average for the energy efficiency. And you can see that the light trucks are not as good as cars, of course, because of their fuel efficiency. They probably have generally the same number of passengers riding in them, but... Um, mm, transit you know, buses are down now, there the, the reason, bottom. okay, that assumes the national average occupancy for transit buses is like 25% or something. It's very low. Hawaii has an excellent occupancy. So our, our transit bus number is much, much higher than the national average. So I don't know what but it is why, at why the moment. Why is it lower than cars in the first place? Cars are very inefficient. Because if you have a, well, okay. But what so, I mean by that yeah. is you get one person sitting there, usually just one but person. But that's the person who needs to go and somewhere. And he sits Whereas in traffic the, for hours. And so, well, the buses do too. And the thing is, in order to have a bus system that's available when people need it, they have to run the buses on a consistent schedule, even if nobody's riding on them. Well, so if your average over the 24-hour period all year long is only 25%, that's, that's, not, that's not very good. Yeah. Hawaii has an excellent ratio, though, so it's much, much better yeah. on the buses. Well, just a footnote to all of that. I told you about my experience in Melbourne. Yeah, free, right? Uh, free yeah. and uh, beautiful. and they're, they're fossil fuel, but um, they're on the way to electric. It's the first step. Uh, write this and down it's more the than final <laughs> exam. The first step is to improve ridership. 
And it's more than just the vehicles, right? If you're using less energy per passenger mile in a bus, is that not better than using Absolutely. more energy in a car, yeah. right? So, so I mean, these, yeah. are, these are complex, um, you know, strategies. Right. And we're talking about them, but I, I, I still feel it's in a sort of in a box. And, uh, you know, government, members yeah. of government, are going to have to think beyond their terms of office. They're going to have to think beyond their personal interests or the interests of their, of the people around them. They're going to have to think long term, and they're going to have to think for the greater good, and they're going to have to do these things. We we have had a problem in actually achieving that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's definitely a long, complex, and integrated process. We've been which, talking about this for a yeah, long time. Yeah, especially integration is is particularly complicated. Because you might have the solution for one thing, and if you're the only agency or the only person who's responsible for making that decision, you can make a decision and move ahead. But when what you do affects everybody else, Absolutely. you know, and could have varying impacts depending on the socioeconomic yeah. situation yeah. or the location, you yeah. know, somebody who's in a location where it's not the optimal solution says, hey, that doesn't work for me, and then they stop supporting it in Yeah, it's like, it's like one-stop shopping. Yeah. You know, we have to... You know, bring all of the decision process into the same room, yeah, yeah. And, and and lock the door until there's an answer. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, the people who weren't then, in yeah. there, are gonna, yeah. yeah. So the free buses idea. So if you you know if you think back to the graphic that had you know who's in charge of what on the modes piece, so that's at the county level, really. Yeah, well, right? sure. DTS. Uh, yeah. Fellow named uh, Nouchi, he's yeah. a very good okay. guy, yeah. Yeah. and he's a professional in terms of transportation. Um, and I had a conversation about this very thing. But you know, the, the, the problem, the reality is, the city is evaluating these electric buses, two-section electric buses, mm -hmm. for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a pop. Well, we don't have the money for that. Sorry, um, and we're not going to get there uh, by waiting around to get the money. So we have to find some other strategy that works from various points of view. As you said, and it's so right, all of these things have to come on the table and they have to be a combined comprehensive strategy. And the people involved have to have a long view and they have to have the authority, the power, the money to do it. So what do we do now? Okay. <laughs> Well, um, I think one of the things that helps, you know, especially this type of program, is if we have the information and people are taking a bigger view. It's not just about a specific vehicle or a specific fuel type, but it is also about the land use and about the longer term view. And we could also talk about vehicles because there's a lot of great stuff happening there, you know, and I have a couple of slides that are, that are fun on that later. But just understanding that these pieces can fit together and you can work together on mm. the on that solution and we're coming up on a new year so the new year's resolution is keep up to date on what's going on and when you make your decision about your vehicle or if you're looking at policy if you have that responsibility take a step back and say how does this fit together maybe it's not perfect but maybe it's moving in the right direction. Are you talking about me or are you talking about our leaders who we elected to office? To oh, everybody. These very me issues? too, them, you. You said something a minute ago I think it's worth dwelling on. You said we're coming up on a new year. Yeah. Well, there's something else, Maria. We're coming up on a break too. Okay. We're going to have a break now. Okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of... Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger, and hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, 
the accomplishments and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. Okay, I told you before, the magic word is Maria Tomei. <laughs> transportation. <laughs> okay, she's talking about transportation. Maria Tomei, transportation, all the same. But then there's energy, land use, and climate change. Okay, climate, yeah, climate change wasn't a separate circle because it is all encompassing. How's that for an answer? There you go. Right? It's a third, you know, yeah, these right. are three it's, dimensional it's a, things, it's right? The platform is climate change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, you had more slides. Let's do this. Yeah, look so at that. I did say that interesting things are happening in the vehicle area with fuels. And so if somebody does want to look into it, there are some good resources. So you've got not just your electricity or your gasoline fueled vehicles, you've still got your biodiesel and your ethanol and you've got hydrogen out there and your natural gas and propane. And so every couple of years, I kind of wonder personally, gee, you know, how are they doing? What are the manufacturers producing? Are they, you know? And so I found a resource. And so if you go to the next slide. Wait, before we go to yeah? the next slide. Okay. What this tells me yeah. is there are too many of them. What this uh, tells me is, is that, you know, it's nice to have diversity, yeah. but the, there comes a point where you have diversity and you're fighting too many battles at the same time. Can yeah, we go back to that narrow, previous slide? You can narrow so it like, down. So, like, for example, biodiesel. Biodiesel bio is... It blend, you blend it with diesel. So okay. your diesel vehicles are tend to be your buses and your okay. larger vehicles. All right, I'll, I'll give you biodiesel. Yeah. Electricity, certainly. Yeah. Ethanol, isn't ethanol That over? blends with gasoline. It's over. No, yeah, yeah still, they're still it's okay. there. Uh, <laughs> still hydrogen, still well, endeavor. that's up and coming. Yep, yep. Natural gas for, for transportation. Yeah, so that's, that's something that we, we don't really see much in Hawaii. There is something happening at the airport. They're comparing some vehicles at the airport um, with natural gas, because it is a thing on the mainland. You know, you've got your pipeline natural gas, and they go ahead and fuel many vehicles with it. And if you look at the emissions, especially where you're trying to reduce your diesel particulate emissions, because the natural gas vehicles tend to be the buses and the trucks. So if you can really cut down on your emissions of the stuff that causes cancer, mm -hmm. some people think that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And so, propane. Okay. And then propane, propane is similar to like natural golf gas. Carts. Uh, golf carts. You know, yeah, it's been used Maybe for many we years. Maybe should all be doing golf carts. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know, I don't think they're actually on, they're, they don't qualify as a vehicle because they're not licensed for use on the highway. What, what I get out of this, though, <laughs> is you have to have a different okay. kind of vehicle for each one of these fuels. Some of them. And right now, some with of them. fossil fuel, yeah. it's all the same kind of vehicle because it all takes the same kind of fuel, mostly. Yeah, well, yeah, gasoline so and diesel. few exceptions. Gasoline yeah, and yeah. diesel, pretty much. So if I have all these fuels, I have all these vehicles, hmm, then which one do I get? And the problem there, and I'll stop in a minute, is that people are going to be reluctant to actually get into the next generation of vehicles because they're going to say, I don't know which one to get. Too complicated. I'm going to wait till this all settles down. Yeah. When it settles down, then I'm going to buy the next well, generation of vehicles. So that's why you keep track of what is being produced. Okay. Yeah, so that's the next slide. Okay. Ooh, all right. <laughs> moving right along. Yeah, moving along. Just slide 14. There we go. So... The model year 2018 alternative fuels and advanced technology vehicles list is maintained by the Alternative Fuels Data Center. You can kind of sort of see it down there at the bottom, the afdc.energy.gov. And so the model year 2018 is done already, so this is the final list. And the 2019 list will be slightly different. But you can kind of see that the, the biodiesel vehicles, now that's generally speaking your larger trucks and whatnot, SUVs, some pickups, some vans, a couple of sedans. But basically what you're doing is having a diesel vehicle and just saying, yeah, I can use biodiesel, which we know diesel vehicles can use biodiesel. So I don't, you know, but by actually putting them on this list, they're trying to get positive attention for that. So the most popular one is the E85. That's the one with the... The ethanol and yeah, the, the flexible fuel. Yeah, flexible fuel. Yeah, but, but by far, by far. Well, um, yeah, and um, one of the thing, the flexible fuel vehicles, that's basically gonna run on gasoline, except in places where E85 vehicles are available. Because you were saying that it has to be different for every fuel. The flexible fuel vehicles, it doesn't. It doesn't they can use gasoline or they can use E85, depending on what's available. Yeah. They do some price shopping, and a lot of them are farm states that are very supportive of the corn yeah. industry. 
So that that is um, one of those. Don't you think that flexible. some of these low uh, low number of vehicles are going to get chopped off unless they can make they a dent in the market? Look at the hydrogen. That's got two, right? Well, I'm I'm, all, I'm always and in so favor that's of at Stan the beginning. Osman. You, I want to see him succeed. That's the beginning, you know. So you've got your Honda Clarity and your oh, Toyota Mirai. Mirai. Toyota yes. Mirai, right? So you've got that's your Toyota. On sale right now. Yeah. So you know you've, you've got to start somewhere, right? So they're small when they start, and then they expand. And one thing I wanted to mention is there were a bunch of hybrids on their hybrid electric vehicles. Yeah. That's a gasoline car. Okay, the flex fuel vehicle could run on gasoline, and that bothers some people, but at least it could run on an alternate fuel. The hybrid vehicles, if they're not plug-in hybrid, they can't run on anything but gasoline. Uh, that's true. You know, that's so they don't true. count. That's true. The original hybrid so that's doesn't even plug in, does it? So it's a gasoline-powered vehicle with some advanced technology, or yeah. what was advanced technology. They, I think they were included because it was kind of the beginning of getting electric technologies so into it vehicles. Works, so a lot of people have But it them only like them. runs on gasoline. True. And it contributed to fuel economy a little so, bit. So you have a recommendation for people? If I say to you, Depends Maria, what your I'm, objective in the, I'm in is. the moment, I want to get the next generation of passenger vehicle. What should I do? It depends on what you're looking for in your in your next generation wanna, of vehicle. I want to come to the studio every day and then go home again. Oh, okay. So the electric vehicles, if you're interested, it seems to me, in the electric angle of things. So how far is your home from the studio? How many miles of travel is that approximately? Uh, uh, say seven or eight. So you could do round trip with a vehicle that would run on electricity for 20 miles would be pretty much 100% electric because yeah. you'd never be using the gas. So if it was a plug-in hybrid, yeah. that's kind of similar to the battery electric, at least for your commuting needs. So you would be looking at those two. You know, hey, I plug in hybrid. I plug in, I drive, and it pretty much takes me on electricity for 20 miles, which gets me home, and I plug in again, and so I hardly ever use the gasoline engine on the on the plug in hybrid. Yeah. That would be, and of course, 100% battery, the battery electric vehicle. Yeah. You like high tech and cool, right? Of course. Yeah. So. But, you know, the problem is uh, that there's there's a federal tax credit on these cars. I'm not sure how long that's going to last. Um, yeah. Could yeah, it, it has be that it's going away? Well, it has. There, there was a limit. Seventy-five hundred dollars. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's that's a fair amount of change. Once an automaker had made enough vehicles, it that's cut right. off. If it you was make two hundred and fifty thousand vehicles. You I forget don't what the number no was, but yeah, right. But the other, and, and I don't know if they've actually reached that either. I don't think yeah. they have, uh, which shows you something else. But the other, the other thing is they used to be. I mean, I'm going back in my memory, my my my, my memory. That's a, they used to be. A, a state tax credit. And when you took the federal and the state together, it was it was pretty persuasive. Now the state tax credit came 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 off. It ended, okay, and it doesn't exist anymore. And there's not a peep, not a little, not a little chirp, nothing about reinstating the state tax credit on electric vehicles. So if we really cared, don't you think our leadership would say, we're gonna we're gonna reinstate uh, the state tax credit on electric, wouldn't, wouldn't they say that in order to incentivize us and change our m momentum? I guess it depends on what you're trying to achieve and who you're trying to give the, who you're trying to incentivize. Me. Right, okay. <laughs> so you want, you want some kind of a tax I credit, my golly. There you go. I want somebody to tell yeah, me that it's yeah. okay, <laughs> that the state is behind this. <clears throat> going forward, I can assume that our state leadership will always give me a break and give me a, a pat on the shoulder for having an electric vehicle. I don't get that now. And so what happens if everybody has that incentive and the electric vehicle's um, percentage goes up and up and up, and then you've got more and more people invested, and then you try to get rid of it? You know, that's well, the I, thinking I guess at piece. some point yeah. mm -hmm. I would have to agree with you. But we so haven't reached that had, point. We okay. have, what, 6,500, yeah. 7,000 yeah. 7, electric vehicles in the state out of a million cars. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's not really showing any luster right now, I think. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Now, but you want, you want an incentive on your car, right? Yeah. You said you haven't heard a peep out of anybody. Yeah. 
So you're gonna tweet about it? What's that? You're gonna tweet about it? <laughs> no, Sorry. I need my president to do all the tweeting. But you know, there is, there is some kind of deal yeah. with, I think it's this year, with Nissan yep. uh, and the Nissan Leaf. I think you get a break from Nissan. Yeah, I think or maybe anything that was purchased of, after November 1st, 2018, Nissan um, and um, several locations were going to provide fast D DC charging for free. You could have, I think, one or two charging sessions for free every day. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, certain locations. So if you bought a Nissan Leaf after the 20, um, November 1st, 2018, there's your incentive. For two well, years, that's, you that's get free, something. fast charging if you need it and want it. You know, it might be easier just to plug it in at home if you're... Might be easier, and maybe that. that's where it's go all going to. Plug but if you home. needed if you it, enough range. Yeah, but if you needed it, there you go. So yeah. that's another. That's an incentive. Yeah. Now, um, if you were going to get a tax incentive, so if, let's say the federal incentive was available for the car you wanted, and let's say uh, the state incentive was available, you'd still want to compare the range and the cost, right? Of course. Yeah. So there's a really cool website where actually they take the list of vehicles, and that's uh, I have another slide on that. Slide 15, and they'll show all the vehicles that were on their list, and they'll show the range in miles compared to the price, and that can help some people. That would, that would really help, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, so you talk can about pick, efficiency. you know, if, if you are cost sensitive and you want more range or are willing to have less range, this type of data crunching is available at that website, the EV Raider. And then this goes up to the $50,000 level. So, and as we know, some, <coughs> some of the electric vehicles are more than that. So they actually have another graph. The next slide. This is the high end now. Is or? up to 100K. So that's got a few more. You know, the stuff on the left kind of got squished. So I'm not, I'm not doing that. You're not that's doing that? That's a disincentive. Oh, OK. You need the next one then. The next one goes up to 200K. <laughs> 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 but it also Where'd you shows get this the, data? <laughs> right there, <laughs> if you're right there. Uh, yeah. So, you know, this type of comparison, you know, can help people to figure out what it is that they, they are interested in. And the, the, the site had a bunch of other um, very okay. interesting comparisons in the. Well, it shows you a lot space. of manufacturers are, are making these cars. Exactly. I, I'm, I'd be interested in a chart about how many they're selling, though. Because I think that uh, there that is actually available. I think I'm sure the, somewhere yeah, the yeah, Alternative yeah, Data yeah. Center has some. So I mean, yeah. yeah, I think I think there are non-tax incentives that incentivize people, um, but the biggest one for electric cars is to, is either long range, or charging stations or both. And there was a piece uh, in the in the paper I think last week about how. Um, uh, Maui Electric was going to buy a network of charging stations that was owned by a private company. Uh, and that, that ought to be interesting to see. I mean, I like to see the utility get into this. But I also like to see a charging station at every gas station. Let's make them ubiquitous. That's an incentive, don't you think? No matter where you go, you can charge up. And these new batteries, and there's an article recently in one of the tech journals about all the new batteries that are coming online. So many batteries. And a lot of them are very fast. The one that comes to mind, we did a show about this last week, is graphene. We talked about graphene before. It's one atom thick of um, kind of carbon substance. And it, you, it, can, it can do solar, convert uh, energy to, to electricity. It can also hold a charge. And, it, and it's very fast. So one of these days, one of those guys, especially at the high-end cars, they're going to have graphene batteries. They'll take a charge immediately in minutes, okay? And then you'll have great range because they'll be able to take a lot of charge, and then you won't worry so much about range anymore. Or the, I don't know about the cost. The cost might be prohibitive. <laughs> it depends it, when you get it. Technologically, yeah. you'll yeah. be ahead of the game, yeah. yeah. And, and I'll... And I'll I'm happy to wait till then, Maria. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for you, it's the price, uh, maybe, unless the cool factor is just irresistible. Exactly. Okay. You got it. There you, you go. You put my words <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> yep. So the the solar, you know, the, the solar and the wind and the other as available resources, you know, as they are um, on the grid, 
more well that um, would be perfect more extensively, to have the renewables and you have your controlled charging times and so would free energy or low cost yeah. charging be part of the factor in your calculation uh, uh, yes it would or but would i it, think charging is low cost anyway really. yeah yeah even yeah. if you pay a lot for electricity yeah. it's relatively speaking cheaper yeah. and so electric cars are actually cheaper to operate until you get into switching the battery which costs like eight or ten thousand dollars switch the battery this is a problem because batteries don't last that long the new batteries maybe with graphene or other uh, substances they're experimenting with um you know would 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 not have that problem and would maybe could last longer maybe even be cheaper even possible yeah, yeah. so one of these days we'll get somebody down here they've got several hundred um certified electric vehicle technicians um, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and so, um, you know, maybe having some discussions with them about do you really have to change the batteries, you know, to what extent and which manufacturers are including that as part of their vehicle um, leasing or warranty, you know, because there are many ways to handle, handle that, and many of the batteries have many thousands of cycles before they appreciably lose yeah. capacity or yeah. need to be changed. This so would, This would change things. Yeah, I'm not, so. yeah, I don't know to what extent that so is So can you find somebody? Concerned. Let's do that. Let's I'll have, let's have yeah. an electric vehicle mechanic or somebody who was familiar with the, the circuits and, we and should the, get the a car list in of, We should get a list of the um, frequently state, you know, frequently stated. It's not frequently asked questions because people don't ask the questions. They just say the you know, this is what I'm concerned. Yeah. And we could actually yeah. go down yeah. each of those items and say, well, how much of that is old and how much of that is current and how much of yeah. that is going to be addressed Even by either... a salesman would be good. Yeah. You know, like from Tesla, I would really like to talk to him or them or her. I thought, so when do you need a car? <laughs> <laughs> I'm open for that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, yes. thank you for identifying my concerns <laughs> and thank you for putting this all together and in three circles <laughs> yeah well it is more than vehicles you know the vehicles can be <laughs> it can be a lot of fun um, yeah. but it is important to also take a broader view at the transportation opportunities as opportunities. well it's yeah. our future together yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get somebody down here to sell you your electric car all right maria okay. tomei transportation okay. is the is the really secret word and um i really have enjoyed this discussion thank you would you come back and do it again next week I, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Just put me on the spot. Show. Very excellent. See okay, you next Wednesday, thanks. Maria.